So, okay. You saw what happens when I when I put the acid and the base together. The, it neutralized it, which makes it sort of safe to handle for disposal. Okay, so very important. Now, we're going to test a piece of flatware, and we're going to test it for silver content by putting the so uh, the potassium dichromate directly onto the surface of the spoon. Now. It is nitric acid, so it is going to eat away at the spoon. It is going to damage the piece. So I'm going to do this on the back, on the corner. And what's going to happen, if it has silver content in it, then this solution, which is orange, will turn red. Okay, kind of. I know that doesn't sound like a huge contrast, but there are other colors that come out that give us an indication of what the composition of the metals are. Okay, so... I'm having trouble completing my sentences. Look, I'm I'm just very annoyed that I, I spilled chemicals all over the cloth. Now, let's continue. Focus. We're dealing with chemicals. So, I'm going to take the potassium dichromate, pour just a drop on the back of the spoon. Now, can you see the color? I hope you can, because it's turning bright red. And that's an indication that there's at least a coating of silver on it. And in order to find out if it is indeed fully silver, what we'd have to do is take a file and cut into it, exposing the base metal. And in that way, we'd be able to get a different color reaction. But you can see the brown, it's browning already, uh, fading from the, the red. So that means it's already etched away the surface layer and it's starting to it's starting to react with the layer of metal underneath. So there is silver in here. You can see it's red initially. Watch. So it turns blood red initially. And as it digs into the metal, because that's what acid does, it actually will turn a darker color telling us that okay it's not it's not pure and in fact if we if we cut into this we'd get an even better indication but I can tell it just by letting it sit there and you know this will ruin the piece by the way I've just ruined the silver and let me just get something that I can neutralize this with It, this falls under the category of things I should have thought of before, but this gives us the opportunity to see what the potassium dichromate is doing over time. You can see it's darkening. So as the acid eats away at the, the layer of electroplated metal, and I'll try to explain more what that is in a sec. I'm, I'm actually looking for... Uh, there it is. It's a towel. It's actually over there. And I'm going to go get it. Keep listening to me. I don't want to spill this stuff. Okay, so I'm getting a towel so that I can put this neutralized substance on something other than a tablecloth. Oh boy. Check one, two. I didn't even check if the mic was on. Let's just hope that it is okay all right you guys see that see that color it's not blood red anymore why because the acid ate away at the top layer now I'm gonna neutralize the substance And let's have a look what's underneath. This is exciting. That gives us a fair indication that, okay, it's not solid silver, but it is silver plated. But I did ruin the piece. So, okay. You may not want to pour a bunch of acid on it just like that, but I really wanted to show you guys the 
you know, the color change. And I'm going to do another one just to show you guys the difference. This this is the 90% stuff. Remember I said this has this has a 90 stamped on the back. So what should happen is that it should turn blood red and then it should turn just a little darker of a red. Okay, that's what should happen. Darker red because it contains more of a different metal. Okay, probably more copper. So let's pour just a bit on the back. I don't want to ruin this one. Hopefully you guys can still see. There it is on the back of the spoon. I'm actually not seeing an initial reaction here. In fact, I think it's turning blue. And that's a copper reaction. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's blue. Okay, wow. So if you were gonna buy this spoon, you'd, you'd see from this right away, you'd see, oh, something's wrong, okay? Because potassium dichromate turns red when it hits silver, so what does, what's going on? Let me neutralize this. Okay, it's got a 9-0 stamped on it. That doesn't really mean anything to me at the moment. And because we're getting a blue reaction, I would say it's probably not silver, but if you know more than me about this kind of stuff, definitely please post up and, and let me know the mistakes I'm doing. But I would say... I, w I, I, I have my doubts about this one, so we'll have to do more research. You know, what else have I got? Got a bunch of other stuff here. One of them is pure silver. Which, which one's pure silver? I'll give you a hint. You're not going to tell by weighing them around like this. Because they're all, some of them are heavier than others and bigger and thicker. Like, actually, this one's pretty light. And this is one that I actually tested by cutting into. Let me see if I could show you. It's, the, the groove that I made with a sharp knife is actually right underneath, so right above my, my, uh, my finger, my plastic finger, right above, I'll try to show you guys as close as I can. Still get some light. Hopefully you guys can see that I've there's a little indentation right there. It's not there on the other side. You see I put it somewhere inconspicuous, and that's the key when you're doing these acid tests. Then I poured acid on it, and I discovered that this particular spoon is well, let's have a look. Let's perform the test right here. So I'll pour a drop of potassium dichromate right on that grooved mark. Okay, now let's observe the color change. Look at the acid on this side. It, tur it turned red first and then it starts turning a different color. It starts turning a green and a blue and all sorts of bad colors. I don't think there was actually any red in there at all. Is it magnetic? No, it's not magnetic. But it's still not turning the right color. And therefore, it's vintage and precious in its own way. But it's not really cool. It's not really what we're looking for when we're hunting for treasure. So, okay, here's one to look out for. Now we know for sure from the mark here that it's electroplated silver. Here's how I know. Because when I took, take a close look, it says Reliance EPNS. EPNS. 
Anytime you see EP, that means electroplate. Okay? Now, I don't know exactly how they format that into EP and S here. Sometimes you see SP for silver plate, and it it actually gets complicated because there's different countries with different standards in how they make them, but the way we test it is the same. We're going to take the solution, and we're going to just pour it right on there. We're going to find out what this is. So look at this color. Look at the color. You see? It's turning a brownish, and there's a lot of red, deep red, deep red, and then blue. Then blue. Okay, so you see that red? That's silver. EPNS, because we, we knew already from the stamp, or at least that gives us a strong suspicion, a strong hint. Okay, we get a dark brown, dark muddy brown. And once it digs through, we get some blue right on the edge there. And that's... Okay, so there you go. Let's just keep watching it. You can see it's going to keep turning blue as it digs down into the copper. Very cool reaction to watch. I hope there's enough light so that you guys can see it. And I'm trying to move it so that you can see. And now I'm going to neutralize the acid. Take a look at the damage. We can see the underlayer. We can see what's underneath. Doesn't look so much like copper, but there's there's going to be some copper content in there, and it, it might be zinc. There might be some lead in there. Although I've been told that lead turns blackish. So let's continue and see what other kind of reactions we can get. I told you that one of these was pure silver. And uh, I'm actually, I'm not going to pour acid on the pure silver piece because I'm, that would ruin it. Okay, this one is by Rogers and Sons. And if you look that up, that should be silver plate flatware. I, I'm going to try to ruin as least many pieces as I can. Let's see if it's magnetic. Okay, not magnetic, but... You know that they make a lot of stuff that is silver plated or not silver at all that is also not magnetic. So the magnet really has its limits. It's useful, but in the world of flatware, there's a lot of a lot of fake f silver flatware that's meant to look and feel like silver, but is actually junk. So we we've looked at a, a few different kinds and we've we've seen a few different reactions with the silver testing solution. Okay, and in a, in a second, I'm going to show you what else. Now, first, this is a disclaimer. If the Hotel Radisson wants their flatware back, please contact me with a self-addressed stamped envelope and the shipping required, and I will happily return this to you. But this was in the chest that we bought at the auction. So it reads, Reed, R-E-E-D, and Barton, Triplex. Hotel Radisson. So I'm going to Google that later and find out exactly what the origins are. If I think a little bit about this, you know, maybe I can find when the Hotel Radisson had flatware like this in production and I can maybe even date it that way. So there's a lot of written information. Usually stamps are accurate. But if you don't trust the stamp, then you've got to rely on chemical analysis. So the last piece I'm going to show you, look, it's this one. Okay, this was the solid silver one. And here's how I know. It's because it has a special stamp on it. There, and there's many silver stamps, by the way, but this is a very unique one. It's got the lion. You see it? The lion with one paw out. It's called the Lyon Passant, 